lot going on, but there's also much we don't know at this hour. What we do know is that Venezuela's current government has done a poor job of providing for its own people. Venezuela has the world's largest oil reserves, yet it remains one of the most impoverished and the most dangerous places on the planet. That is beyond dispute. Everything else is up for debate. Would the overthrow of Maduro make Venezuela a more stable, prosperous country? More to the point, would it be good for the United States? Lots of people claim to know the answer to that, but they don't. They have no idea. If recent history is any guide, nothing will turn out as expected. Few things ever do. But that has not stopped the geniuses in Washington. It has not even slowed them down. This afternoon, on a bipartisan basis, they agreed that the United States ought to jump immediately, face first, into the Venezuela mess. Watch Florida Senator Rick Scott explain. Do you think that our presence there would make a difference? Oh, absolutely. I was down on the uh, Venezuelan border last Wednesday. This is just pure genocide. Maduro is killing his own citizen. Is it worth, though, however strongly you feel, sir, losing American men and women to, to, to do just that? Neil, here's what's going to happen. We are in the process. If we don't win today, we were going to have Syria in this hemisphere. So we can either make sure something happens now, or we can deal with this for decades to come. If we care about families, if we care about you know, the human race, if we care about our fellow worldwide citizens, then we've got to step up and stop this genocide. All right. Just want to make sure that's clear. If you care about families and you care about the human race, if you want to stop genocide, you will send your children to Venezuela to fight right now without even thinking about it, without even weighing the consequences. You'll just do it, assuming you're a good person. Of course, if you don't care about families or the human race, if for some reason you despise human happiness and support genocide, then you'll want to join Satan's team and embrace isolationism, the single most immoral of all worldviews. That's what they're telling you. That's what they're demanding you believe. Message received. We've heard it before. But before the bombers take off, let's just answer a few quick questions, starting with the most obvious. When was the last time we successfully meddled in the political life of another country? Has it ever worked? How are those democracies we set up in Iraq, in Libya, in Syria, and Afghanistan tonight? How would Venezuela be different? Please explain and take your time. Next, are we prepared for the refugees a Venezuelan war would inevitably produce? A study by the Brookings Institution found that a collapse of the Venezuelan government could force 8 million people to leave that country. Many of them would come here. Lawmakers in this country propose giving them temporary protected status. That would let even illegal arrivals live and work here, in effect, permanently, as many have before, with no fear of deportation. Are we prepared for that? Are we prepared to absorb millions of new Venezuelan migrants? All of them great people, no question, but many with little education or skills or English. Finally, how exactly is any of this good for the United States? Our sanctions on Venezuela have already spiked our gas prices. That hurts our struggling middle class more than virtually anything we could do. So what's the point of doing that? So our lawmakers can feel like good people? And if they are indeed good people, why do they seem to care more about Venezuela than they care about this country, the one that they run? They're happy to send our military to South America at the first sign of chaos, but U.S. troops to our own border to stem the tide of 100,000 uninvited arrivals a month? No way, they tell us. That's crazy talk. So what's the thinking here? 